data can only tell you so much. The, the data scientist in the team back then, he, he looked at all our benchmarks from 2012, from 2016, Clash Royale, Clash of Clans, Heyday, Boom Beach in 2014. And he compared the data one-to-one -one with what, where Brawl was at. And it didn't, didn't look great. You know, there, there was like clear shortcomings compared to these games. And so he said, look, we're going to launch this game. It's going to go to this DAU and then it starts going to drop and, you know, it will fizzle out down there somewhere. And that wasn't inspiring for anyone. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the people on the team were really hyped about the game. They really believed this can fly. And I believed so too. And what S Structurally, were there any differences in the kind of game that it was that led the data to be that far off from like what the benchmark sure it's a, the first time we have a real-time pvp right face-to-face -face game yeah it's like a clash clash royale was of course similar but not exactly the same mm -hmm. not team-based either mm -hmm. it's also a brand new ip too Br brand new ip Lo lots of things we we just didn't know and i just w what i did is really i tried to show that there's not only the pessimistic view in the data but there's also like these other possibilities which what might happen and uh, when when we ended up with making the launch decision, it was that was end of August. We really like we knew it was likely not be Frank's optimistic scenario, likely also not data scientist pessimistic scenario, but it would be somewhere in between. We made some compromises on the marketing launch budget to justify for that, build a better structure in place, and like um, how we can quickly react to if we see something hap works or doesn't work to make sure that we can quickly follow up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that's actually a really important point because, you know, when you're launching a new game, you don't know how it's going to perform. So we had to build a very flexible budget and system to try to figure out how to adapt both to, you know, in a downside scenario, if we have to scale back, we could, but also in an upside scenario, how do we really lean in? And if, you know, different regions are performing better, then we'll want to lean in even more. Like, you know, Korea, for instance, after Brawl launched, uh, was was doing really well. So we we leaned into the Korean market. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was something that really helped fuel the, you know, the game in the early days. Mm. I, I think that's, that's a, one of these interesting things um, because traditionally we soft launched in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Nordics. And then we added, um, for example, Malaysia. What, what all of that doesn't tell you is what, uh, there, there's the, the unknown unknowns. You know, would the game maybe fly in a country I don't have on my radar right now? Yeah. Supercell always has been super successful in, in North America. Um, but when we actually launched Brawl to the global audience, it became quickly the biggest game we ever had in South Korea. It became the biggest game we ever had in Russia, Poland, Russia. Israel, yeah. um, Turkey. Markets where our footprint was way smaller before. So, and, and this, the data would never have showed us this. Mm. So, so I'm I'm almost like data data should never be the decision maker. It it can inform your decision making. But but if you have a strong conviction that you know that you see something in this product and you see there's some positive elements there, then just just balancing out that risk by making smarter decisions in marketing spend, in how you structure the team, and you know, having having a plan B if something goes wrong. I think it's much more powerful than saying, Oh, we kill this game. Hey there, we hope you like this clip. If you want to watch the full episode in its entirety, please do click here above or go down below to the A16Z Games YouTube channel where you can find this clip, the full episode, and so many more interviews. We hope you like the content and we'll see you next time.